Today we're going to be playing some Callus Red in Pioneer as we prepare for the regional championship in Washington, D.C. coming up in uh, just a few weeks. This deck has been uh, increasing in popularity uh, ever since it popped up about two weeks ago. And uh, whenever an aggressive deck starts to do really well, uh, it usually means that the deck is actually very good, especially when it continues to do well in the hands of multiple pilots. One thing I really like about this deck is that it is extremely uh, fast, it is explosive, and it has kills that some decks can't really interact with very well or deal with. And a lot of that has to do with the namesake card of the deck, Cal Cell Sword. So for a black and one, you get a 2-2 that says... Whenever it enters with a uh, it enters with a one one counter for each creature that died under your control this turn, but the money comes from the adventure part of this burn together, which is target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to any other target. Then you sacrifice it, and what Callus Cell Sword offers is the ability to essentially fling or thud in a uh, one of your creatures at your opponent's face, and uh, on top of that, it also targets your creature. And so if you have something like a Heartfire Hero which has Valiant, or even the uh, prowess creatures, you're able to get uh, an extra buff out of it, while also just giving yourself a creature to cast for two mana. And while it might not seem like casting Cal Soul Sword as a 2-2 two -two for two is that good, I can assure you that an aggressive deck uh, on the play with a one drop and no two drop will usually cast Cal Soul Sword as any pressure, because any pressure is better than no pressure. And the burn together aspect of this card just doesn't come up until much later in the game. You don't really want to draw two of these in a single game unless it's a way for you to combo kill your opponent. They can kind of ride in your hand. So we are only playing three and we're not playing the claim to fames like some builds are playing because I found many players uh, at this stage of the format are implementing exile removal or ignoring you completely. And Claim to Fame is one of those cards that's extremely good against like Fatal Push and uh, Lightning Axe, but extremely weak against Portable Hole, Temporary Lockdown, Sunfall, and the like. Uh, we have no way to put a creature into the graveyard uh, ourselves. And so that, uh, except for Burn Together, which is just like not really something you want to do too much. So personally, not a big fan of Claim to Fame in the deck. I do love Claim to Fame as a card. I think that if you were playing Claim to Fame Ledger Shredder Grixis or something, it'd be kind of sick. But for me, I just did not like the claim to fames and they rotted in my hand too much. And so I cut them. I saw a recent list playing Dreadhorde Arcanist that I really liked. And so I put some Dreadhorde Arcanist in the deck to kind of function very similarly like to the old Boris Heroic decks. We're kind of like Mono Red Heroic in a way where we don't have any cards with the actual ability Heroic, but all of our stuff has uh, Prowess or Valiant or both. And so getting an extra cast off of Dreadhorde Arcanist is quite strong. Um, if you play... Claim to Fame, it's very strong with Dreadhorde Arcanist because you can bring back and grant it haste so you can attack. And if you do want to play Claim to Fame, I would recommend playing it over the Might of the Meek. I'm not 100% the Might of the Meek is worth it yet. Uh, in this slot, I've had um, uh, Reckless Rage, deal four to an opposing creature, deal two to your creature. And that card was pretty good. Uh, you might also want to try like Flowstone Infusion. Flowstone Infusion is a card that I like where you can use it to kill an opposing creature or you can buff yours. Um, I found that card to also be a little too mediocre in some spots. Uh, this deck is extremely low to the ground. As you can see, we don't have any cards in our deck that cost more than two in the main deck. Um, we could probably get away with playing 20 lands, but I quite like having 21 when we're playing things like Emberheart Challenger, where they're a little bit mana intensive. And we can cycle a bunch with Ancestral Anger, Might of the Meek. So hitting your second land drop is extremely important. And whether or not you draw your third land is not that important. We have a little bit of Flood Protection. We got Gigantha. We also have uh, three Den of the Bugbear and two Ramianap Ruins. We don't want to go overboard on the lands that deal us damage because there's tons of aggressive decks running around right now. Because of that, we're playing four Blights at Pathway. We're going to be putting that on red about 95% of the time. And then every now and then after Cyborg, or if we really want to cast uh, Callus Cell Sword, we'll play it on black. Um, but for the most part, this is just a red land that can occasionally cast your sideboard cards, and I think that's exactly what you want in this style of deck because we are basically a mono red deck in the main. Um, newer addition to the deck as far as creatures are concerned, Heartfire Hero. Uh, this and Emberheart Challenger are the two mice from Duskmorn or from uh, uh, Bloomborough that uh, allow you to target them for an advantage. 
Um, Hardfire Hero gets a plus one, plus one counter whenever you target it for the first time each turn. And then when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. This card is extremely good with Cal Cell Sword because it does double damage. And so you're able to essentially use uh, Monstrous Rage, Titan Strength, Ancestral Anger to grow Hardfire Hero. And then uh, throw it at their face with Cal Cell Sword. Uh, we are a Slickshot Show Off deck. Slickshot Show Off also quite excellent with Cal Cell Sword. Gets buffed very quickly, very aggressively, and then we can fling it at the face. As a finisher, after we've attacked, thanks to the flying. Sideboard, uh, four thought seeds, four fatal push. These are going to be your most efficient means of interacting with specific types of decks. Our main deck is uh, very goldfishy, where we just kind of uh, ignore what our opponent's doing and just try to kill them as quickly as possible. But after game one, our opponents are likely going to be a lot more interactive. And so by nature, we want to be a little more interactive as well uh, so that we can kind of... Uh, leverage that interaction to punch a hole in their game plan uh, and then attack them. The Thought Seasons are great against the slower decks with like Sunfall, Temporary Lockdown, you know, your Blue Eye Controls. Uh, I don't really like Thought Seasons against other Thought Seasons decks. I would probably not bring it in against like Rakdos Midrange or what have you. Um, Fatal Push, very strong against the Mirror, very good against other aggressive decks. Not easy to turn on Revolt. Uh, Urbrass Forge, a three cost artifact, extremely powerful effect for fighting grindy matchups like Rakdos Midrange. Uh, is it Phoenix, Azorius Control? Um, Urbrass Forge, I think, will be one of the better sideboard cards. We could maybe go down to three to add some other piece of interaction to the sideboard, but I'm not really, I don't really think it's that necessary. And lastly, two Unlicensed Hearse, which uh, help eat our opponent's graveyard to keep things like Arclight Phoenix at bay. And we are a Gigantidec. This is Callus Red, testing for RCDC. I'm Tandy. Let's play Lee. Going to be on the play. Opener is pretty lackluster. I think I'll mulligan. We want um, fewer lands for sure. Two lands is ideal. Four is a lot. Uh, if they were, if this were a four land hand that were very strong with our spells, I would keep, like, if we had maybe, like, uh, two creatures and a buff spell or something like that. But even that's, like, a little loose in some spots. I feel like we need Hardened Scales and Keeper's Talent. Build it, Taylor. Build it. Build it. I think Endkeeper's Talent is just an excellent card. Excellent card. All right, this hand is also pretty mediocre, but I'm going to keep because we're already on six. And I'll keep... I guess I'll put back a Pathway. No one drop creature. Our opponents on Yorian just realized we probably should have went to five. We could maybe get under them. This will definitely be a um a thought seize matchup, but very weak opener here and against a matchup that is on the play and they will have time. And so I think uh just dead. Just dead, chat. All right, well, not the best use for it, but this is the fail case for Cal Cell Sword. It's just a 2 2. But a 2 2 is a 2 2 when you have nothing else going. And I played three different triumphs Sylvan Carrioted. I'm going to keep Titan Strength this for damage since they can't kill it. Remember our challenger? Keep it on top. I don't think I'm going to play it. They would just easily block it. I'm going to save it for Monstrous Rage post after they kill this thing. Maybe we need, like, um, Cal Soul Sword or something that can bounce it back to hand. Maybe that's something. I was thinking uh, think of it with the mouse that returns... All right, well, they didn't play uh, anything at sorcery speed. So we will just go ahead and slam. I think that we're just going to get hit with one, maybe two leyline bindings. I don't really know what our opponent has in hand. They're a five-color deck that's played four freaking triumphs. 
But our draw was just so weak in the opener that I don't think we're going to be able to compete very well. But we'll just force them to do something first. I don't think I'm going to play my Monstrous Rage here. Unless they play like a Lightning Helix on the Ember Heart Challenger, then I will. All right, here we go. And now if they play a Wrath Effect, we do have Den of the Bugbear to get going in there. And we could have gone for the Monstrous Rage on this just to try to get more damage. But I think overall it's just a pretty weak play. But maybe we shouldn't have even have played this. Helix on this. I think I'm fine with that. You have an RCQ this weekend, but can't get access to energy, and I don't know what else to play. Uh, I like Frog quite a bit. Frog's good. All right, so they have, they're just like Niv to Light or whatever. They just have a million two mana removal spells. Uh, the addition to Lightning Helix to this format actually just made the Niv decks just like significantly better against the aggro decks. Uh, not a whole lot we can really do about it either, other than just kind of cheese kill them with our buff effect, buff effects and sacks, and we'll try to get them with um, the, what you call it as well, the uh, Herbrass Forge. All right, so they're top ten. They got a Helix, Pillage the Bog, so they got two cards. This is a six six. I'm just gonna concede. All right, not the best showing so far. We're going to think about eight cards. We got Thoughtseize and we got Herbrest Forge, and I think that these eight are quite strong in general. Uh, I feel like we're going to get attritioned out pretty hardcore, so I'm not sure that I want to keep the Cell Swords in. I like Dreadhorde Arcanist. I like the creatures in general. I like the things that cycle in general. Uh, I would I would normally be looking to take out removal spells. So I think in this spot, we're actually just going to board out some buff effects like Titan Strength. Since we're boarding out the Cal Cell Swords. I like the Angers because they cycle. I think maybe we can trim a Hardfire Hero because we are cutting so many things that work well with it. I'm going to keep this hand. And I'm going to Kamano, I think, over uh, Swiss Spear. But maybe I should go for Hardfire Hero so I can Ancestral Anger it on too. That's probably better. And if I naturally draw a land, then I'll go Swiss Spear Kumano instead of Ancestral Angers. Save Ancestral Angers for the next turn. Yeah, so if I draw a land... I'll sequence very aggressively, and if I don't draw land, I'll probably Ancestral Anger this to look for a land. Does Tain not sound as clear as usual? Um, I can see if there's something wrong. All right, how do I sound now? All right, can you hear me now? Do I sound okay now? All right, so we didn't draw the land. We're going to play Ancestral Anger. Still didn't draw the land. Bummer. So two pretty weak draws. I don't think that this is indicative of what the deck can really do. Um, we could have maybe mulligan this hand, but I think this hand's fine. And I think that we're just somewhat likely to draw the land. Smoochie is any better than it was a minute ago? If not, I don't know. Might be your phone, usually watch on the top. Strange tinny sound. Um, hold on. I don't hear anything. I'm sorry. I I thought maybe there'd be like a fan or something in the background. Maybe try reloading the page or trying to change the um uh the quality. Okay, let's anger again just cuz we're not wanting the land pretty bad. So we found the land. 
I think we'll go for Swiss beer and a trade with Valky is fine. We could have maybe Kumanoed instead, but I don't think that that's a, f a very good line. I'm very happy with the trade on the Valky because Slickshot is fine later. But I also think it's just an, an advantageous block for them because they just didn't have a way to kill the hard fire that turn. That's okay, Smoochie. Uh, whenever someone says that there's an issue, I always try to make sure that it's uh, localized or if it's on my end, I always try to fix it. And I appreciate you calling things out. Even if it's on your end, I don't mind. Quality of stream is very important to me in terms of sound and video. Playline binding on this thing exiles it so we don't even get the buff from it, which is or the extra damage from it. Very frustrating. All right, tap down the bugbear is killing me. I'm going to go for an Emberheart Challenger and an attack for two because the show offs do a lot of burst damage with haste and monstrous rage. So does the Emberheart, uh, but it does more damage uh, immediately while they're tapped out, which is why I did it then. Plus, I can go show off plus Kumano instead of show off plus Monstrous Rage. And so I can deal damage that way. They found Untap Red. Helix is going to give them some time. Are we going to go for a show off plus Kumano? And we're going to try to brute force through all this spot removal. They have three cards in hand. Next turn, uh, we can show off plus Monster Rage. If we draw a land, we show off Monster Rage Kumano, and we can probably kill them even if they have a big blocker like a, a Niv Mizzet. Except they don't have another uh, Lightning Helix, but they start by tapping red, red white. Okay, well, let's see. Are they dead to just Slick Shot plus Monster Rage? I don't think so. I think we need to draw a land to be able to kill them. I haven't done the math yet. Here comes a bring the light, it looks like. Hopefully it's just lightning helix. Oh, five mana lightning helix is good enough. Told me a friend of wolves. Yeah, yo. Yeah, yo. God, I love magic. So fun. Chad, this is why I like playing Mana League. You don't just lose to fucking Brain the Light. I'm a Mana League gamer. All right. Come on. I wonder how easy this game is if I just draw my uh, third land or second land when I, you know, two turns earlier or whatever. All right, so we could go for a Monstrous Rage here. I think we just don't deal that much damage with it. And we can maybe use it to punch through a blocker later. So we are going to play another Kumano because it's still a lot of damage. We're going to say go. Uh, Burger, thanks for follow. All right. Binding takes out Slick Shot. One card in hand. Hopefully, it's not Niv Mizzet to draw and refill. But it looks like it's something scary. Okay. Cool. <sighs> Another Helix. Yes, dear. Another Helix. They got Verse, Colgon's Command, and Helix. We'll take six. We flip a Kamano. Is there any way out for us? Is there any way out? A creature plus Monstrous Rage is not enough. Six hundred nineteen on twelve. I think we're dead next turn to everything as well. What's your take on playing this at the RC with the Leyline? I don't think the Leyline's very good, but I could be wrong.
All right, so we're just dead. GG. Uh, we're going to keep this opener. Uh, we are on the play. And so I'll probably lead Hardfire Hero and then maybe Titan Strength on two on upkeep to try to draw the land, depending on what they do. We could lead with Kamano to put a counter on this, but I want to hit my land drop. But I kind of want to do it naturally. I don't need to do it naturally, though, because I, I want a Kamano before I play this. All right, play with fire. Just going to knock down my guy real quick. Okay, well, another one lander keep and just missing on land. Chat, I don't really know what that's what that means. You know, like, I don't think that this hand is a mulligan. Uh, this is the second match in a row where I just kept a couple one landers and just died. So, I don't know. Opponent is going to be some sort of red strategy they play get to lava runner which signifies to me that they have wizards lightning in their deck i think lava runner and wizards lightning are just like two peas in a pod uh, i'm gonna anger this just to try to draw to a land so i can keep carving we did find the land so i think we have a shot now let's see what they do though things can get very bad for us because we do only have one creature and they could have just have some fire removal I was very into the uh, Wizards Lightning deck at the beginning of the RCQ season. And uh, I saw um, Aaron Barrett playing some last night, and she was kind of owning. I'm personally not a big fan of Vaishnav Pyromancer, but it looks okay here. It's just a threat to deal some damage. They have one mana up. It leads me to believe this is probably Wizards Lightning. If we draw a land, we can make this a 3-3 and protect it from Wizards Lightning. I'll try to do that probably. Bomat Courier, okay. I think this is based off of Patrick Sullivan's list. He was telling me about he was playing two of these and two of these, and then he had some of these main over Skewer the Critics, which uh personally not the hugest fan of, but it looks good here. And I don't have much removal in my deck, so it looks a lot better now. Uh okay, so we're just gonna play an Emberheart Challenger, and I think we just have to play defense here. And say go. And we'll play defense with both. Because I assume that one's gonna die, and then I hope one gets to block or Maybe one can hold back their blocks a little. Yeah, if we had drawn the land, we could have protected our thing. Not drawing the land means that we're just dead now. This has basically been our life for the last two matches. Uh, I will block the Bumat Courier because if they have a buff effect, it'll trade. And they have to sack it before uh, damage if they want to do the ability. Monster Rage here, so 6, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to go to 5. Okay. I'll just say go. I'm going to play defense again. Looks like they just have two burn spells for the face. Couple or light of the sage found here. That's gonna dig the through the deck a little bit. Another bum my courier. Okay, so if they just play bum my courier and attack, we actually have some decent blocks lined up, and I don't think that I die thanks to Titan Strength on this. We go to one from this. All right, so we're going to go here, and we need to get four toughness. Can we do that? Can we get four toughness here, or no? I think the answer is no. So if we Titan Shrink this, it only goes to three. Monster Rage only goes to three. So we die. It'll push in. Uh, Might of the Meek, and I think two Slick Shot Shops can come out. Lickshot show off is pretty weak to uh, play with fire. Most of our creatures are, but it's the most vulnerable because it's hard to protect. Another one lander, Mulligan. Uh, this hand is okay. I'll keep. I'm going to put back Rammy Nap. And the Phantom Push should help us a bit. If they just have two kill spells for our two Heartfire heroes, there's a chance we just never draw another creature and lose. 
that's kind of the problem with playing a bunch of buff effects is if your opponent just kills your creatures, your buff effects don't do anything anymore. I probably will go for Mantra Rage here just to do a bunch of extra damage. And if they kill it, they still take damage from it, so... This is one of the reasons why I really like the green splash for Audacity and um, Innkeeper's Talent. It keeps the Valiant triggers coming pretty easily. And the Monstrous Rage does something very similar to Audacity, where it leaves something behind that keeps buffing it, which is cool. How's that feeling so far? Honestly, I'm not in love, man. Personally. Uh, all right, I don't think we'll need the second black, so we'll just play this on red. This game is going well because they miss a land drop, but we've missed our second land drop in two of the three games that we played. It's died. I could have mulliganed, I guess. One time I mulliganed to six or five and still missed, but... Any buff effect we find for Ember Heart should be pretty solid. Uh, they do get to flip Kamano this turn, which means that if they kill Heartfire, it will exile it. Yeah, I know that there's probably something I'm just doing differently. Um, mulliganing badly, or I'm just drawing badly. And either way, it's like um, the first time you pick up a deck, if everyone is like overly prepared for it, it just kind of feels like... Um, I don't know. But, I mean, we're only in match two. We lost to Niv in round one, where they just had a bunch of Lightning Helixes every game, and we missed our second land drop once, so GG. So kind of high on Heroic, have some spicy updates. Well, I think um, I think both the Heroic mice should probably be in the list. I just don't know that it's necessary to play white. Like, the white cards don't seem as good as the red cards. But that it's it's a very similar deck to the Cell Sword, Eddie. All right, we're going to say... Um, Mono on one, probably. Maybe I should push on one. I think I'm just going to hold up push on one. They're like 95% to play a creature here. And if it has haste, I just want to keep it from doing me damage. And on my turn, I can just go Swiss Spear Kamano. Maybe this is like an extremely defensive line, but I, I think it's okay. Maybe they don't have a second land again, like we were screwed twice. Okay, they do have a land. Go ahead and kill this thing. And we'll play Swiss Spear and attack, probably. Maybe I'll play Commando post combat. If I play pre combat, their play with fire or whatever will just kill it. I miss a damage this way, but I get to maybe protect it from removal. Or at the very least, I get to do a free damage. I think I'm going to cast it now. But I, I do think playing the second main phase is correct in the because of this. So we got we basically got one free damage. And this is something that most people just won't do. Like, it's just not a common line. And, but I, I think it's right. Because our opponent is just, like, so likely to have that play with fire there. And uh, if we do it before, our opponent just saves the damage. All right, so we're going to get hit for three here, but I think that we are fine. All right, we're going to play Emberheart Challenger and hope that it doesn't get hit with a Wizard's Lightning. I really want to draw land so we could put a counter on it. And that's basically the going to be the end of the game. If our creature dies, we just don't have much to do. But we're not really dead to the Slick Shot show off that much. Witchlogger Frenzy. Yeah, that's tough. Our deck just doesn't have kill spells in it because we're not a traditional red deck. And so when we play against like a traditional red deck, we're just like now in a spot where. I don't know. All right, let's go for Ancestral Anger. We can save it from a two damage or even a three damage spell here. Gonna do a bunch of damage while they're tapped out and they didn't have a piece of interaction. 
Now it's back down to a 3-3, three, three, so it can certainly die. We can certainly die as well, but Den of the Bugbear is not lethal. This is one short, so if they attack with everything, they lose. They hold back etching. We take 3-4-5 down to 3. And I think Titan Strength on this will be lethal with the Swiss Spear. So I think that we win. And I don't think it matters how they block either. I think it's guaranteed kill. All right, nice. So I think this is maybe a tougher matchup because they just have a very similar burst damage game plan, but they have interaction for our creatures. So I'm, I feel lucky to have won that game, but I think our opponent probably made some mistakes. What are your decks of choice for Pyo now? Hmm. Uh, Aldo, you're great, man. I, I So at this point in my life, I don't even care about stream snipers because I don't really play that many big events. And mostly my job is to, like, test out new stuff and then share that with people. Um, but I do appreciate you uh, saying that. But I, uh, it's not a big deal either way. I'm going to go for a Slickshot here, I think, with the counter. Maybe it should be Ember Heart, though, because it's just more damage. There um, is a Phoenix. Daniel uh, Oh, Daniel Akos plays a lot. And uh, very likely they have... Lightning Axe, but maybe Lightning Axe this early is really good for me uh, if they don't have Phoenix. And Fire Impulse is such dog shit here. I wanted them to kill this over this because of Might of the Meek, but it's okay. So I don't want to say that you made mistakes because I couldn't see, and I didn't see you make anything glaringly obvious, but... There was a spot where I just felt like uh, I should be behind, and I wasn't. So I'm going to Swiss Spear attack. And if they block with we'll Monstrous Rage, and their thing will die, and mine won't. And if they don't block, I'll just post combat heart fire, probably. Maybe I won't do anything. Maybe I'll just cycle Might of the Meek on their thing, EOT. Yeah, I do think Flowstone is really good against, like, this deck, for example. Ledger Shredder is just, like, extremely annoying. I'll never be able to beat it. I'll never be able to beat it when they have mana open either. So let's play maybe Dreadheart Arcanist and hope that they don't have... Man, I'm taking so much damage. I drew three, three of my four lands that deal me damage. Oh, baby... Where are you now when I need you most? I don't think I'm going to attack. Actually, attacking's fine. They have to act... Okay, it got bugged. Very cool game. Don't know what happened. This unattacked. My favorite. I don't know if that's ever happened to me before. So I missed the damage. I don't know what happened. I clicked it and it unclicked it without telling me that it unclicked it. I guess I double clicked my mouse, but I didn't see the animation were unattacked until after I clicked OK. Yeah, this is a huge punt. I, I think I'm just going to concede the game. I just don't care. I feel like uh, the misclick just killed me. 
Uh, I don't really like Fatal Push or Thoughtseize in the matchup, so I'll just bring in some Hearse. I was going to get my Kamado eaten for free. It was just all around horrible. Just a horrible, horrible thing that happened. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, chat. My the Meek, worst card in the deck. Maybe it shouldn't be in the deck. Whenever I find myself signing out a card every single time, I just think maybe that card should just not be in the deck. You know? Like, this is a weird one, though. And this is a deck that's, like, really hard to figure out. Playing the Golgari Yeager deck and the three mana harvest and doing some serious job, I have to admit, trying out some mana sinkers at the moment because you have access to a lot of mana. That's true, Kiwi. Uh, are you playing the Mihook Maskers in the main? What's up, Nick? Eddie, do you want to do any, um, you want to do uh, Pioneer stuff this week? Really lean into the RC, or do you want to keep doing, um, stuff for the Apex? Okay, so no main phase kill this. I'm not sure if that means they're going to play opt or whatever or consider. So I'm just going to play this and attack. We have two creatures worth killing. Um, we don't have any way to buff them at the moment with our open mana. Unfortunately, Daniel's a strong enough player to hold up mana. And if I had a Swiss Spear, I could really punish him. But all they got to do is just uh, do it on the end step or whatever. All right, so we'll play the Ancestral Anger. So we'll attack for three, and then I don't think I'm going to play Kamano. Ledger Shredder just owning me. Probably need Running Volley in the sideboard, but maybe Fatal Push should just be coming in, since it's very similar. It's crunch time? Yeah. You're pretty sold, sold on Boros for the Apex, right? I think it's a good idea. All right, so we will go for a Monstrous Rage on this thing to save it. And then if they have another thing, that's okay. Nothing we can really do about it. They just had, all, had it all. Had it all? What, three one-man removal spells in the top 13? Okay, I think I'll just buy Jagman, and the next time we can just play a 6x Jag. They, if they don't have much, they might hold this back to block Den. But if they attack, maybe we just attack with Den. <clears throat> Ooh, I actually have a Spikefield Hazard in one of my uh, Phoenix lists, chat. Whenever, whenever a, a good grinder has a card that I have been considering, I always feel good. Daniel's a great player. Okay, so they're attacking, but they are thinking about not attacking, which to me signifies that they expect me to play Gigantha, but they may want to defend against Din. But I, th I think it's just play Gigantha. I think the problem here is that there's some chance they have changed the equation, which has been popping up more and more in the sideboards. And uh, that card can counter Gigantha for two. 
But if they if they have that, I would much rather obviously be attacking with Dinner the Bugbear instead, putting them to five. But I missed the counter on the Kamano. Next turn we can go give this trample, draw, and then land animate den and attack with that Kamano and the Gigantha, and maybe that'll be good. Yeah, it's a, a very main deckable counterspell. Azorius Control is starting to play multiple in the main deck. Chat, whenever you play Magic and, and your normal opponents just start playing main deck cards that are good against your deck, you have to just like reconsider your entire strategy. Like, imagine everyone started playing two main deck Rest in Peace, two main deck Unlicensed Hearths in every deck, and it's like, maybe it's because they're trying to hate you out, but also maybe it's just correct to do so because of uh, some you know, piece of interaction that they have in their, or some, some two card combo they have in their deck or whatever. All right. So let's go ancestral anger on the Jag and see if it survives. Odawara. So we can tap it for five. All right, so we'll just recast it. They do get a Ledger Shredder proc. We don't get to draw the card, but I can also shock and play the Kamano this turn. Yeah, I think it's just a great counter spell. I think it's just a good one. And I think that you'll see um, Azor's control adopted in high numbers in the main, like two or three. And you'll see uh, sideboards like Phoenix play too. It's really good against uh, Gen Sack because it counters Yigra as well. As it counters basically every card in the deck. Because every card in the deck costs two, one, or is green or red. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot I could... You can only pay with either green or red. But I think uh, I had to use... I could only use it for non-generic. And so I could only use it for this red or this red-green. And uh, I think I needed to shock to do it, but you could be right. I, I wasn't paying that close attention. All right, so we're going to swing with everybody, and they're probably going to block the Jag. Well, let's see if they let me attack. I think I'm fine attacking with both. Maybe not. If they have like Opt or whatever, they get to eat the Gigantha and take two. It's even a removal spell. They have even more. That's so sickening. The draw from Daniel this game has been extremely good, but he's churned through half his deck, so it's hard to say how good. Torch, Axe, Hazard, Axe, Impulse, Impulse, Brotherhood, Axe. My guess is that Daniel's not going to attack with the Ledger Shredder, but I could be wrong. If we get a Treasure Cruise here, that would be brutal. Could play Picklock as a blocker and then loot and then attack me down to eight. But I think that just not threatening lethal next turn makes that a weak attack from Daniel. But we'll see. Didn't discard a spell either, discarded a land. Two lands in a row allows for Hall of the Storm Giants to be active, but all right, so there's one. So a land next turn kills me, probably. We might find a spot to hold back. It just depends on if, if Daniel wants to get aggressive with the Ledger Shredder, and I think that he should now. Maybe not. Maybe it was better if um this was discarding a spell so that Picklock, Ledger Shredder was lethal next turn. All right, Emberheart Challenger. I think that's worse than just animating the Den and attacking. And we just hope that there's no land off the top and that maybe something comes with Emberheart to give us a little more action. So we can block here and take three. We can block here and take four. All right, so five, six... All the Storm Giants, lethal. We'll see if we die. 
All right, consider that means no haul this turn. All right, so Picklock comes in. Daniel kept the card on top of the deck. I play the land. I don't know what that means. I'm going to play the land. If they play a sweeper effect of some kind, we still have Den to threaten lethal. And if we have like a Titan Strength or something, we can threaten lethal on top of Picklock Prankster. Another Shredder. I, the last card just has to be removal. Okay. So five, six. So a spell off the top is lethal if he stacks it correctly. I guess so there's no stacking correctly. He has to randomly draw a discard on the Shredder to kill me. And he did. GG. All right, so we're one and two. I'm going to drop. Um, okay. So I want to talk about the things I like and don't like about the deck. Um, so against Phoenix, Phoenix is a matchup where claim to fame is excellent. And if you're playing against a strong player, uh, playing, uh, spot removal, claim to fame is going to be much better than might of the meek. And I quite like and the idea of playing, uh, two claim to fame main and two in the board. Especially if we're going to be playing Dreadhorde Arcanist in some small number. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim from Urbrass Forge because they're kind of expensive. And we're going to play two claim main, two sideboard. And against Rakdos and Phoenix, we'll bring in claims. And against basically every other deck, we'll side them out. Most decks have exile removal. It's not very good. But uh, I think claim to fame gives us some of that like burst potential later in the game that, that maybe the deck's lacking otherwise um, for like the attrition matchups. Uh, I think playing four Calisol Sword might be reasonable as well. I don't really know what I would cut for it. Uh, but this this is like a pretty solid looking build. Um, could maybe cut back on one of the Den of the Bugbears. It entering tap did screw me one time. And I think that that's a very real concern with this deck. Having your third lane enter tapped means we can't do as much cool stuff with Slick Shot sometimes. In the um, Wizards Lightning decks, I only played two Den of the Bugbear. And four ramming up rune. I think that was correct. Maybe we should be playing four ramming up over the two sulfur springs since we just have 12 black sources and so few actual need for it. The problem is we're not doing like a lot of burn damage. And so I don't know that this is actually correct. I think maybe I actually want a Sokens on. That's maybe an oversight. One Sokens on seems great. And then maybe a spike field hazard. I think Spike Field Hazard as a land slash piece of interaction is okay. Also, part of me just like really thinks we should be playing uh, Play With Fire. And maybe that just doesn't work that well with the Valiant creatures because we're not targeting stuff. Um, I think I'm going to play one Sulphur Springs. And maybe Dreadful Arcanus is also bad, but I, I do like the idea of it. But I'm kind of in this this spot, like I'm in this area, and I think that these cards are easily on the chopping block. Um, you know, the mana can be changed by a few to make Blight Steps less impactful for putting them on red versus black. Uh, but in the the majority of the black cards in our deck are in the sideboard. You know, we have Claim to Fame now. I'm not even really sure uh if we want thoughtsies and fatal push on the sideboard I, it's just there because the cards are good but i'm not sure if uh if they're i don't know if like fatal push is a valid card for this deck like maybe we should just be playing reckless rages and i have had reckless rage in the deck plenty of times uh over the last two weeks uh but so far it's just been lackluster you know you can't play it on turn two with just Heartfire hero which is a bummer it doesn't work with kimono it doesn't work with slick shot it does work with Swiss Spear, but I think if you want to play Reckless Rage, you probably need to play um, Soul Scar Mage so that you have the ability to play it on turn two more often. Um, yeah, but this is kind of where I'm at with it. I, I don't love this deck, but it's it's certainly winning a lot, and I have lost to it multiple times, and, and I think it's just a really powerful deck. But my draws weren't great. 
I don't think I played particularly well. I had a misclick once. Not really sure what to do about it. Um, if we if we played Wizards Lightning, Nick, I don't think that's a horrible idea. But if we did play Wizards Lightning, I, we'd have to move away from like the Cell Sword stuff. And I think that the strength of the deck is from Cal Cell Sword, just like throwing the creature at the opponent. But we didn't get to do that in two or in our three matches. Maybe we should just be playing four Cal Cell Sword and uh, no Dreadhorde Arcanist. If we cut the two Dreadhorde Arcanist. We can just play a fourth Callus Cell Sword and uh and the Spike Field Hazard, and that gives us the ability to hit like an extra land drop. But it allows that land to be useful in a number of situations. Yeah, I think push is probably the most effective removal, but uh I think something like this is probably good. Uh so if you are looking to play this deck, I think somewhere around here is where I would be at right now. I think most people are on 20 lands. I like 21. And I actually technically have 22 with the spike field hazard. But um you know, flooding is a real issue. And so if you find yourself flooding too much with the deck, then cutting a land is the only thing that makes sense. And um but we had the complete opposite problem where we were playing 21 lands and we got stuck on one land a bunch, and I think that that's just going to happen when you play so few lands in your deck. Um, either that or you have to just mulligan a bunch. And mulliganing with this deck is extremely brutal. 